Yeah, chosen you, chosen to pick you in in the interview. So could you give us some some input? Of course. We would like to know more about your idea, and also how it helps education, and who directly benefits from this idea. Sounds good. I would be happy to tell you about Challenge Box. <clears throat> so the idea behind Challenge Box is that we have these adventure stories where students are able to read through the adventure stories and pick different options, it's like a choose your own adventure. But then at various points in the story, it actually there's some problem in the story that you need to solve by building things. So we give, uh, so in the box itself, along with the story, we give physical products and materials that you get to then use to build solutions. Okay. So, what problem are you trying to solve? So, we're trying to solve a number of different problems. Uh, we think that for parents, it can be a little bit difficult or challenging to find just really good quality educational materials, um, you know, for their for their kids, and also for teachers. You know, they're always trying to think of. Uh, think up new ideas about well, different projects that you can bring and you know trying to build all that stuff. Well I think that teachers are they're fantastic at teaching and they should be spending more of their time actually interacting with their students rather than having to go home and work long hours trying to think up new projects. So we want to be able to give projects ready-made to the teachers and for students I think that you just you guys want to have something that challenges you but it's still fun. Okay. Yeah. Could this idea be put to a mobile app? A mobile app, of course, yeah, especially from the story side, because imagine if you had a mobile app that actually walked you through the different elements of the story, and at various points, you it could be like, all right, here's the next challenge, and it tells you about the challenge itself. Um, so obviously we can't give the, you know, we can't send you the physical material through the mobile app, but if you already have popsicle sticks and rubber bands and different materials, um, you know, in front of you, you can then build something and even like use your uh, use your uh, your phone camera to take a picture of what you've done and share it with the other classmates and your other friends. Can this idea integrate with others? The, yes, the idea can integrate with others. Um, I'm just trying to think of, of different ideas that it could integrate with. Um, well, really, any type of any type of story or any type of book. Um, it could be integrated into there where you can take that story or that book and say, well, maybe at this point there's this, you know, there's this thing that you need to build or a house or a structure or a bridge or a boat or whatever it is and have that be part of the story. Um, as far as like other uh, integrating with other products, uh, I'm sure that it's possible. I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now, but, but you know, imagine if you had... Um, any type of virtual world or games where in the game you have things that you can build. So you can build things in real life, but you can also build things um, in a game as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why would you want this idea at a university or school or someplace where people learn? Mm -hmm. Why would they buy it? Why would they buy it? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. And I think that, well, when you're, when you're talking about why would they buy it, you have to look at um, who would actually be making that decision to buy it. And I think in a school situation, it would be the teacher you know, who would want to buy it. Uh, and what I alluded to earlier is that with the teachers, you know, if they are able to know that we're going to get these stories into the classroom and the different students, regardless of their level of ability, are able to interact with the story in their own way and in a valuable way, uh, because you know, I think we, when you guys were working through one of these challenges yourselves, like you were able to share ideas and really work together to explore the possibilities and to find a solution. Um, so we can, um, we can both make this possible for individual students where each one is working on their own ideas, or we can, have, we can make it possible for students to work together. So I think a lot of these different, um, these different learning goals would make it a, a really interesting experience for the classroom. Who supports your idea, and why? Why did you create this idea? Uh, well, I'll, t I'll answer the second question first. Um, so the idea came from a book that I was writing uh, before, and but as I was writing this book and trying to think about, because, well, my my personal experience when I was nine years old, um, I got in trouble in my third grade class, 
uh, because I was renting pencils to my classmates. And the teacher got upset. She's like, Evan, you need to learn how to, you know, you need to learn how to share, right? So I think what a teacher would do today is they would see that and they'd be like, huh, this is interesting. He's like, he's pretty entrepreneurial, right? But there are moments when, you know, when I think every student has the ability to be creative and to learn how to be creative. Um, and it's a matter of, you know, it's a matter of growing that skill because creativity is like a muscle, right? So I'm just trying to provide the weights that you can use to strengthen that muscle of creativity. Um, and, I'm sorry, what was the first question again? The other question was, who supports this idea? Well, luckily, yesterday, you know, during the startup weekend, uh, you know, I and my team, we went out, we went outside into the Inner Harbor, and we were showing this to perfect strangers as they were walking by. And every single, every single kid that we worked with, whether they were four years old or 12 years old, they all were like, wow, this is a cool story, and they were really engaged when, we, when it went to that first challenge. They were engaged. Every single parent that we talked to as well, and some of them were teachers as well, um, they, they were like, wow, where can I get this? When can I buy this? When is it going to be ready? Um, so I feel very, very lucky that, that a lot of people, it seems like right now, in terms of the people that we've spoken with, are interested in this and supporting it. Is this idea be compatible or merged with other ideas? Um, well, is it compatible with other ideas? Totally. I mean, you can, again, you can bring in other storytelling elements, or um, you, can, you can merge it with other educational platforms. So, you know, I just think that it's like you can merge it with an art platform, because imagine if in the story, you know, at some point in the story, you're like, hey, you're looking out of this window. What do you see? And you get a chance to paint what you see, you can paint a painting. Um, or if you come to another part of the story, it's like, uh-oh, we don't know what happens here. Can you write your version of the story? So you can have it with writing programs, you can have it with art programs, you can have it with, you know, you maybe, maybe one of the challenges is you go online and you have to write, you actually have to code, and you have to write a you know, computer program that allows you to accomplish something specific. I mean, it can be merged with all of those things. This is my last question. Sorry if I keep asking questions. No, questions are great. <laughs> um, uh, can this question, can this idea become a curriculum for teachers? You know, we were just talking about that, and I think what we may do is, uh, as we start to write these stories and explore explore the possibilities for learning, um, there are ways of, of embedding subjects you know, into this, so that within the context of the story, you get to learn about history and math and engineering and, you know, and art and design and writing and everything, right? So we're exploring ways that this could be, you, that you can make a series of stories that actually becomes a curriculum and you can adjust, you can adjust the difficulty level for different grades. So and that's I our hope. One, I have one last question. Okay. So do you think that this idea, since you're, like, you need to build stuff, right? Tech things and art. Do you think that this could actually help students get more involved in STEM careers? In STEM careers, totally, totally. Uh, one of the reasons why I did this is as I was doing my research and even I was talking to a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of artists and a lot of scientists, people who are very creative today in their adult lives. And many of them, when I I asked them a single question, which is where where did this all begin? for you. And I'll tell you what, many of them said, you know, when I was nine years old, I tried this. Or when I was 10 years old, I tried this. And something like that. And what it showed me is that there's this age between like eight and 12 years old when you can make a decision, you know? And because what, what's happening is, you know, and research has shown that during this age, this age range, you're, you're starting to get really ambitious with your ideas with your own ideas, because you're seeing like, wow, these are all the different things that are possible. But what's unfortunate is that at the same time, many, kid, many kids start to become more critical of their own abilities. So it's at this age that I think many kids decide that they're not good at science, that they're not good at math, that they're not good at these different things. And I'm just trying to show them with these projects. It's like, actually, yeah, you are good. And if you keep practicing at it, you'll be even better.